Okay, for today, we are doing lesson 5.1. This is technically day two of it. Yesterday was the easy part, where we just had, here's two points, and you can find the equation of the line for them, find the slope between these two points. Now you actually have to move to pre -calc level, because frankly, that before, that was just algebra level, maybe, maybe algebra two level. Okay, this is pre -calc level. All right, so in this cross section of a swimming pool, first of all, to clarify for the people following along at home, we already switched the D and the S. Good note. Uh, this is supposed to be the shallow end of the pool, and this is the deep end of the pool. That's because it's not very shallow here, and it's deeper, at least deep enough to drown most people that aren't eight feet tall, right there. Um, did see a really tall guy the other day that might have survived that one. He was incredibly tall. I think he's one of the Timberwolves. He was walking into this. Uh, uh, um, a what was it called harvest moon right near me anyway back to on the shallow end of the pool we're supposed to start here for part a and i would encourage you not even to consider part b yet and we're going to cross off part c because to do that it would take you 25 or 30 minutes just to do this one homework problem we're not going to do that much all right so we're going to cross off c but just focus on part a the distance in feet from the edge of the shallow end of the pool Okay, so we're starting here at the edge of the shallow end of the pool, and then we're going to go here. Do you get that at the beginning, the distance is, the, sorry, the depth is consistent? It's just two feet deep. Do you get that's totally different that, than what happens in this little zone right here? For the next however many feet, which you need to figure out, it is, there's a slope involved, right? The slope on the bottom of the pool, okay? And the depth gets deeper and deeper based on how far you go from the edge of the pool. Like from here, if you go over like, let's say here, that'd be like 12 feet. Go at 12 feet and, okay, I went a little too far, hold on. Um, that's not 12 feet. If that's 10 feet, then that maybe be like 12 feet. Okay, so that's 12 feet this way. The depth is now changing. Do you get, I'm going to need a separate equation for this area. Can you shut the door for me? Thank you. And a separate equation for this area. And a separate equation for that area. Does that make sense to you? We need three separate equations. All right, this is the part where I want you to add a page to your document. Because you need a page to do the, the writing on this. You can't do this just squeezing it in. There's no way. This is a complicated answer. So add a page, please, right now. So after this page, you'll have a blank page. So I'm going to make a blank page right there. And part A has got three equations. But they're all the depth. The depth is equal to three different things depending on where you are. It said to make a piecewise function. See, the piecewise function is defined for these three functions are what makes up my depth, because it depends where you are. Do you get it depends on the small d, the distance? This is depth. It depends on the small distance. If the distance is between what and what, we do our first equation. Help me with that part first. If the distance from the end of the pool is between what and what, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just say it. Mr. J, yes. You're making it way too complicated. The distance from the end of the pool for the first equation, it starts at a distance of zero from the end of the pool, meaning you are at the end of the pool, and it goes, so it's between what and what? Zero and ten. Okay, so everybody, here is your first part of your piecewise equation. Is your first equation is going to be between 0 and 10 feet. You got the next part? Nope, nope, I get what you're saying. We could take D sub S or something complicated, but for right now, part A is only asking about the distance from the shallow end of the pool. So it's between 0 and 10 feet. Yes, sir. Yes. I am writing out the answer for you in piecewise notation because that's what it said in the problem, and I'm just reminding you how piecewise looks. 
All right, the next part is between something and something. Come on, help me out. Between 10 feet and 22 feet. And technically, we can't be equal to these. Now, you could argue about whether, it's, whether it actually is at 10 on the first equation versus the second equation, but just go with me on this. And the last one, let's the last equation go from, from 22 feet to 37 feet. So from 22 to 37. You get that I've just divided up my three equations, and again, I get to pick which one gets 22. Maybe I'll say this one gets 22 instead of this one up here. And then it definitely, the only thing that can own the last one is the, the third equation. So there we go. Do you get I have three equations? This is the equation for the beginning. This is the equation for the middle where the slope is changing a lot. And this is the equation for the end. All right, that's the setup for this problem. Now, the, do you get that at the beginning the distance really doesn't matter because it's just always 2? How would I write an equation for that? D equals what? If I just say 2, I'm missing some information. I'm not telling them about the slope there. So why don't we just add in one little dumb thing? What would make it have a... Yes? Yes, an x, but you, if you just put an x, you're going to say that the slope is 1 right there. How about 0x? There we go. Plus 2. That's a good way to start. Now, one thing I want to clarify. I think that the uh, key, by the way, when you look at this later, because you're going to want to check yourself at the end, um, and I'm not going to help you with this whole problem. The key does this where the depth is negative, and so it says that that's a minus 2. I disagree. Because I don't think you ever say, well, I was at depth negative 2 in the pool. No, you weren't. You were 2 feet in the pool. And the other argument is that distances aren't negative. Distances are, as far as distance there is, is 0. So it's a distance down. So I just think that the teacher did it backwards on the key. So just be aware they're going to use a negative. I'm not. All right, so then do you get this next part? The distance does depend. So the slope is not 0. See what I'm saying? So it's going to be very similar, except slope is not zero. But I'm going to warn you, almost everybody is going to mess up this equation because they think, oh, it's just this and this. Zip, zip, done. When you actually test a point, like test a point at 12 feet, you're over 12 feet from the wall, your depth should be just a little deeper than 2 feet, like maybe 3 feet. If you test a point like that at 12 feet, when you stick in distance 12, Remember, this is distances. If you stick in distance d equals 12, you should be at like 3 feet. You shouldn't be at 8 feet. A lot of you are going to make an equation that doesn't really work. I'm going to see if you can figure out from that little tip of test to dist depth distance from the wall of 12 feet. You should be at about 3 feet deep. Why are a lot of people's equations going to be messed up? All right, so I'd like you to figure out this equation right here. And right here, it may take you a minute or two to get in the groove of working with the other person, but try to find those two equations and make sure they actually work. Like stick in a distance of, I don't know, 23 feet and see if it actually is at the depth it should be, if your equation really works. Yes? I get what you're saying. You just need your slope to get bigger and bigger, right? I have to let you figure out whether you want that to be negative or positive. You have to figure that out. Yes? Yep. Please do not say an answer. Okay, good. I'm not so concerned about the endpoints. Like, exactly at 22 feet, I don't know. I don't need to be worried about that. I need an equation right here. I'm not going to answer your question. I don't want to give away the answer here. So you need to write me an equation that involves x. You're not involved. Oh, wait. Did they didn't use x, did they? We used d. Thank you. We should be using a d right here, too. So use d in your equation for distance. All right. Try to figure out these two. If you're a super advanced primate, you might be able to go to the next level. Like if you think you got these nailed and you've even tested 
distances and you know they're working, you are going to be doing part B together eventually. But don't even think about B until you feel awesome about A. I'll pause for a minute and let you guys work on this. All right, we're back. And I bet you there's somebody in here who can tell me, instead of me being the disseminator of all truth, why don't you tell me? What do you think? Yes, for this one right here. One half. X. Is it in X minus 3 in parentheses? Or? All right, before you simplified it, can you tell me what it was? One half, and then there was some stuff. Can you tell me what it was before you simplified it? Uh, you're close. All right, so let me show you what I'm trying to say here. Uh, one half of x. Do you get that this whole thing has been shifted 10 spots over? Because the new, the second graph doesn't have this 10 in it, so we have to shift it over 10. Okay, so if we go x minus 10, that's your shift. And then we still have the plus 2. Will that simplify down to what you said? Absolutely. Okay. I think it will. Let me double check that. So 1 half x. And by the way, where did the 1 half come from? Do you guys know it was 6 over 12? Yeah. Rise over run. The rise was 6. The run was 12. Okay. Now, let me just double check this. See if this actually works. And be positive I'm right. And you can prove if I'm right or not by this. If I stick in something like 10 feet, if I move 10 feet over, it's, of course going to be two feet deep. 10 should still be two, right? But for this ne next area, we need things like 12 feet. If I go over 12 feet, it should be a depth of three. I'll show you that it actually is. If I put in a 12 here, 12 minus 10 would be what? Two, and then you go one half times two, which makes one plus two makes three. Yay, mine worked. All right, so if I distribute this out, because I know a lot of you didn't write it that way, and that's totally okay. You didn't have to write it this way. But yours better come out to the same thing when we distribute it. 1 half x, 1 half times the negative 10 would make minus 5. But then if I add 2 to that, it would be minus 3. There you go. How many of you figured that out? All right, awesome. I know that's a tough one. No doubt about it. Okay. Yes, sir. That's fine. Did you get the same answer? Yeah. Cool. So what we did is we did, we were looking at the point where it was 10 feet away. Okay. You were looking at the point. I'm repeating for the people listening at home. You were looking at the point where it was 10 feet away. Okay. Like there? We did one half parentheses 10 plus x. I'm going to use d. I think yeah. you mean equals 2. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. And you figured out what distance away you must be. Yeah. All right. Does that also work when you put in things like 12? So what did you what were you solving for then? When you did that, to trying to find d, yeah, and then we found but didn't out. you already know that d was two? Oh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use yeah. q then. Okay, go ahead. And uh, we found out that it had to be uh, oh, negative three. Yeah, negative three. That x q equals negative three. Ah, okay, okay. So, All right. I cannot promise you that that will always work. I'm not even sure exactly what you were doing there, but obviously it did work for you, and I would expect it probably would work for you in the future. I'm sorry if I had time to delve into it. I would. We have uh, 12 minutes left before we have to leave, so I have to move on. There, I want to honor, though, that there are many ways to solve problems, and uh, it's awesome if you come up with a different way than I did. All right. So... Just if, if you're not sure and you think you're doing it right but you're not positive, just stick in a depth on this next one. You know this only works between 22 and 37 feet from the end of the pool. So pick something like 30. Stick in a 30 into your equation. 
And if you stick a 30 into your equation, the depth better have come out to the same thing, 8. It's going to be 8 feet deep in that whole zone. Okay, so did you have something like it didn't matter because there was a zero slope? See what I'm saying? But then we go plus 8. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. All right, good. All right, then the harder part is going to be to do B, which is to do it from the other end of the pool. And the cool thing is, though, it's just things are backwards from each other. It's the same exact process as you just did. Shouldn't take you near as long. You're just going to have three equations. But again, you should be able to say, all right, in the first part, it's between uh, zero feet. And if we go from the other end of the pool, it's going to go the first 15 feet are all the same, right? So between zero and 15. And then between 15 feet and uh, I can't remember what is it, uh, 20. We had to have 12 to that. Yeah, it'd be 27. Very good. And et cetera. You, you can, you've got the format now. And you know that it stays the same for the first part. So it's like 0D plus. So anyway, the only hard one to do is the middle one. I'll let you figure that out. That's your homework for today. And I wanted to give you a, a hard one because we've been skipping some hard ones and show you how hard they can really be. Now we need to do 44 through 49 uh, is just, we are only doing some more homework problems. I'm going to go through right now and just tell you briefly which ones we're doing and which ones we're skipping and give you some hints on each one. If you like doing this all yourself, then don't listen. But I encourage you to listen, get some help. On number 44, even the teacher got messed up on this at one point. They were using negative 1, 12 as a point. I know, it kind of looks like a point. That's not a point. Negative 1, 12 is not a point. What is that? Yes, sir? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I was saying the wrong numbers. Negative 1, 2, but it's not a point. What is it? Yes. It's an interval, which means it's a little zone from here where x is negative 1 to here where x is 2. You know x to the third kind of looks like my black graph there, right? Okay, so... What are they really asking? Are they giving me a point? No. They just gave me two points. Do you get how by giving me this is my x value right here? I can figure it out by using this little formula to figure out what point that's at. And this is my other x value, which is 2. And I can use this little formula to figure out exactly what point that's at. Then do you get, I now have two points? Once I have two points, it's easy to find slope. Okay, so for those of you that have been drifting, I have to find these two points, and I encourage you to write on, on your page like this that there's two points I need to find. They didn't tell me any of the points, but they told me the x values. So do you get, this is negative 1, and I don't know what this is yet until I use the function to figure it out. And the other x value is 2, and I don't know this yet, and I can figure it out. And once I have those two points, it'll be easy to find the slope. Okay? All right. So this one, same exact thing. Let's just go right to the point thing. Something comma something. And they didn't give me the point 1 comma 5. They gave me a range from 1 to 5. So the x is 1, and the x is 5. And you have to figure out what the other points are by using this function that's given. If you want to make a little sketch of it so you can kind of see what's going on, here's where x is 1, and there's a dot like there. Here's where x is 5. There's a dot like down here, and it's the slope between those two points. So you, once you know what the two points are, it's easy to find the slope. Okay, that's the ideas for the next few. Uh, and you, do, you are required to do 44, 45, 46, and 49. They are all very similar to each other. They all are giving you two points just in an unusual way. Okay, then, uh, number 56, it looks really scary, but it's not. It's an actually a pretty easy question. By giving you the big T, which they define as temperature is big T, and the little t is inside there, it's kind of like where x usually is, or for f of x, the little t is time, t hours after 6 a.m. This is time, this is temp, and this is time. Then when they give you a big T of 4, did they give you a time or did they give you a temperature? 
they give you a time. And they just want you to figure out what the temperature was. So you stick the time in here and here. And you can use the graphing calculator for that if you want to. Or you can just grind it out by hand if you want to. And you can find those three times. Then when they do this, notice this is an interval again. So they're giving you effectively two points. Four comma something and eight comma something, which you already figured out back here. All right, so it really isn't nearly as scary as it seems. On these next few slides, everybody go to 59, circle problem 59. Quickly, please. Circle problem 59, you can skip the rest on that page. Circle problem 65, you can skip the rest on that page. Then for the AP and HL problems, I want you to do the two that are on this page. They're actually, this, these are way easy. Like, look, I know a point. I know another point. I know two points. I can find the equation for that then. Two points are given. They just give you the two points in a funky way. But otherwise, they're just giving you two points. So it's kind of like a review of yesterday. That's why that's a good one. Number 10 is, only, is not for the faint at heart. It is a challenge question only. Okay, so don't, if you don't have time, you won't be able to do 10. All right, so I have told you which ones to do. This is a tough assignment, but I did give you a bunch of time to work through the toughest part, and the rest of them that I'm giving you really aren't that bad. So get them done. That's all I have for you for today.